message of grace is brought to you by Christian people who believe the Bible to be the Word of God and who appreciate its power and authority. Within the pages of the Bible itself, there is a God-given design for its study. Rightly dividing the Word of Truth is the key to understanding the Bible. We're glad you've joined us for another interesting look into God's infallible book as Richard Jordan, president of Grace School of the Bible, presents another in a series of messages designed to help you understand and enjoy the Bible. Let's join them now. For some time we've been studying the issue of rightly dividing the word of truth. And we've tried to see how the Apostle Paul not only tells us to rightly divide his word, but he also tells us how to do it. And as we, as we do that, and as we've progressively gone through lesson after lesson here on this broadcast, where we've studied uh, just how to go to the word of God and let it rightly divide itself, We've come in our studies today to, to a very, very practical place, to a place where, where some of the real practical impact and effect of rightly dividing the word of truth, it will be very evident in our lives. You know, people want the Bible to relate. They want doctrine to relate to, to their practice and to what's going on in their life. And I guarantee you it does. That book, the Word of God, this book right here, that's the most relevant book you'll ever find uh, time to put into your life. It'll build resources into your life that'll impact on the details of your life day in and day out. That Bible is relative and sound doctrine relates. It'll impact, it'll change, it'll work in your life. That's how God works today. The Bible, Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 2.13, that when we, were, when we take the Word of God, we receive the Word of God as it is in truth, the Word of God, not the Word of men, that it effectually works in those that believe. And if you'll take the Word of God and begin to understand that, and that's, that's our whole point here in this broadcast, is to try to cause you to understand the Word of God, to help you to understand the Word of God, to give you the capacity to be able to go to the scriptures on your own, on the basis of your own understanding, and get the information out of the Word of God that God has placed for you. The scriptures are profitable. God has placed profit there for you. And He's given you and, and, and me the equipment, the divine operating assets as, as believers to get the information, to get the profit out of God's Word. Now, if you've never trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, maybe you go to church. Maybe that's why you're watching this program. Maybe you've got all kinds of problems in your life today, and you, don't, uh, you know that you need help, and you'd listen to a program like this because uh, you know that there is help in, in, in the Word of God, and there is help from the Lord. Let me encourage you today. Trust the Lord Jesus Christ, for without trusting Him, Without knowing the author of the Word of God, you'll never be able to get the profit out of the Word of God that's there for you. The whole Bible is written and designed to tell you that God loves you. He values and esteems you so much that His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, went to Calvary's cross and died for you. He died there as a payment for your sin debt. He died there to take care, to put away sin, the Bible says, by the sacrifice of Himself. When Jesus Christ died at Calvary, He died for everything that's wrong with you. The Bible says, everybody knows, I hope, the verse, John 3, 16, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It doesn't say that God gave the commandments, so that if you keep the commandments and live up to His standards, you could, you could go to heaven. It didn't say God gave the church. It didn't say He gave a preacher or a priest or, or some religious order. It said He gave His Son. Because he that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. You know, my friend, God loves you, and God's provided for you a clear demonstration of that love where objectively, historically, God entered into the, in, into the events of humanity. He entered into human history and went to Calvary's cross as the, the payment for your sin. The Bible says that, 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 that scarcely for, for a righteous man would, would, would some die. Yet peradventure for a good man some might dare to die, but God commended His love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You know, I say all that, I, I'm reminded just, just, just only a few days ago, a lady called me, she, she visited our church, and then she called me later. She said, you know, I've, I, I, my, my husband walked out on me. 
just left. We had a bad fight one evening, and, and he left, and he walked out, packed his bags, and I haven't seen him since, three weeks ago. He left me with, with four small children, two twin girls and, and then two older little boys. And he said, he's gone. I don't know where he's at. He said, I, I, I've cried myself to sleep at night convinced that I was, I, I was all to blame for all the problems. And she says, I know I had plenty, plenty of problems and I, I contributed to it. And, and I felt he rejected me and I was unworthy to be a wife. And, and he didn't consider me a fit mother. And, and, and she had all these doubts and, and she knew that she was completely and totally valueless. No self-worth, no, just the shame and the guilt of her sin. And the fear of, 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 not, uh, of being overcome by, by that guilt and by those sins and by our problems and, and, and just frettering, fretting away life. She said, as a last desperation, I came to church. I've seen your church building down there on the corner. And we came, I came and she, she sent her children to the nursery and she came and sat in the service. And as she sat in the service and heard the gospel, she said, I heard something today that I didn't know existed. And that is that... God loves me. And He loves me so much that He's demonstrated that love by giving the greatest gift that He could ever give. He spared not His own Son for me. And you know that, what that lady did that morning? She trusted the Lord Jesus Christ. She responded to God's love, God's great love and His great mercy and His great grace. And she responded the way God would have you to respond. And that's just to say thank you. That's just to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's just to trust Him. Not to say, well, I think I'll let God help me make it, because you can't make it. Not to say, well, I think I'll, I'll let God do you know, what He can, and I'll do what I can. No, not that at all. No, no. It's just to re recognize that God has done it all for you in Christ. And all that you can do, and all that you need to do, is trust Him. To believe on Him. Faith is a positive volition toward the truth of God's Word. That is, you by your own personal choice choose and make a decision to rely exclusively upon what Jesus Christ did for you when He died to be your Savior. Trust Him to be the Savior He died for you to be. That lady did that, and you know, all of her problems didn't flee away that moment. She told me on the phone, she says, you know, Brother Rick, said, I, I'm, still, I, I'm still abandoned. My husband's still gone, but I'm not alone anymore. And you know, that's true. That's what salvation's about. That's what God does. And God loves you to the extent that He has sent His Son to die for you. God commended His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, not cleaning up, not straightening up, not going to church, not keeping the commandments, not treating our fellow man right, not doing the best we can and making out and being pretty good folks, and it's not really my fault, it's somebody else. Not all of that, but just while we were yet sinners. Have you ever come to the place in your life where you've realized that you can't make it? That climbing the ladder won't make it? That you just keep falling off? Well, my friend, when you do, there's good news for you. Paul says that it's a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world not to show us a path to God, not to be a martyr to show us a new cause to, to fight for, not to bring in world peace, not to feed the hungry, not just to heal the sick and raise the dog. He said he came into the world to save sinners of whom I'm chief, Paul says. And that's it. And you know, when you trust the Lord Jesus Christ, you come to know the Savior of sinners. And then this book, the Word of God, it takes on a new meaning because the Lord Jesus Christ is the living Word. And the Bible is the written Word. And the means that you and I have of communicating with the living Word is through the written Word. It's the vehicle. It's the means. It's the channel through which we have contact with the Spirit of God and with the living Word of God. Jesus says, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. That's why we study the Bible. That's why we look into the Word of God. That's why our, our, our interest is not just on human experiences. It's not just on, oh, how this is going and how that's going or how terrible this thing is or how, how wonderful that thing is. But the issue is, what does God say? Now, we, we, when we study rightly dividing the word of truth, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for how can we come to the word of God and find out what God says. And that's what the Apostle Paul tells us to do, and he tells us how to do it. 
as we approach the Word of God, recognizing the distinctions that God's made in His Word. Now, we've come in our program today, and by the way, we've been studying this for many weeks. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, maybe you've tuned in today for the very first time. At the end of the program, our announcer will give you the address that you can write and request free literature and tapes. If you'll write me, you do it today, if you'll write me and you say, Brother Rick, I watched your program and you talked about rightly dividing the word of truth and you said if I was to write, you'd send me a free, no, no charge to it, a free tape on rightly dividing the word of truth, how to do it. So please send me the tape. If you'll write me today, I'll send you that tape free. It would be my gift to you. This is a ministry. We want to give you what God's given to us. We're not after anything from you. We just want to help you to understand and rejoice in what we've come to understand and rejoice out of the Word of God. So right, if you don't understand some of these things and you want to know it, and you haven't been able to see the program in the past, or maybe you have been, and you'd like that tape, you write it out. You, you get a pencil and a piece of paper at the end of the program. Uh, Brother Dan will t give you the address, and you write it down, and a phone number you can call either way. And uh, you, you, you write us or call during business hours, and we'll send you that free tape on how to rightly divide the word of truth. Now, we've come in our studies. We've already seen how that God's word is laid out according to a dispensational plan. And we, we were looking last time at, at how the Lord Jesus Christ dealt in his earthly ministry. And I'm going to put up here, uh, like, let, let this represent the earthly ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ in the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And we saw how that the Lord Jesus Christ dealt in his earthly ministry with the nation Israel only. The Gentiles were down here and the Gentiles were cut off from God. And the Gentiles were not a part of the ministry that he had, but rather he dealt with the nation Israel. And he dealt with the nation Israel exclusively. His ministry in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John was exclusively exclusively with the nation Israel in view. Then the Lord Jesus Christ dies on Calvary's cross. He's, he's buried and then he's, he's raised again. He spends 40 days with his apostles. And then he ascends into heaven. And then the Holy Spirit comes back on those apostles in the book of Acts over here. And you have the book of Acts like that. Now, we, I want to talk to you for a couple of, couple of Bible studies together about some of the things that the Lord Jesus Christ in His earthly ministry told His disciples to do. What kind of commissions did He give them? And I want to say to you again, when you understand how to rightly divide the word of truth, it's going to get to be real practical. The impact of doing what we're talking about is going to be real obvious when you begin to talk about the things that Christ told his followers to do. That is, the commissions that he gave them. In Matthew chapter number 10, the very first commission that our Lord gave to his disciples. We've already looked at this, this one in some, some detail. Matthew 10 verse 1. When he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now the name of the twelve apostles are these. And then he gives you the names. Verse 5. These twelve sent Jesus forth and commanded them, saying... Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter you not. Don't go down here to these people, but rather go, verse uh, 6 says, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. They were just to go to the nation Israel. We saw in our program in the, in, in last time how the Lord dealt, how many Gentiles the Lord dealt with in His earthly ministry. Do you remember? He only dealt with two two Gentiles in his earthly ministry, and, and only those two, and them only because they had a relationship already established with the nation Israel. He wasn't preaching to a bunch of idol worshiping heathen Gentiles like you found in your city and my city today. He wasn't preaching to Gentiles in the United States of America or in South America or Central America or Asia he was pre or, or Europe. He was preaching just to Israel, and he's preaching to the lost sheep, and he tells his apostles, don't go to the Gentiles and don't go to the half-breed Samaritans. Just go to the twelve tribes of the, the lost sheep of the, uh, of the house of Israel and as you go preach saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now they're looking out here into the future for a kingdom that's going to come. 
They're looking for his, his kingdom out here when the Lord Jesus Christ is going to come back from heaven and establish a literal, physical, earthly Davidic kingdom on this planet. We've already studied that. They know about a period of, of wrath and tribulation that's going to come on the earth and especially upon the nation Israel prior to that kingdom. And he's, he's warning Israel about that coming wrath, telling them to repent and prepare uh, to, go, to endure through that wrath into that kingdom. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And he says, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely you receive, freely give, provide neither gold or silver nor brass for your purse nor script for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes nor staffs, for the workman is worthy of his meat. That is, they're going to get their reward over there in that kingdom and they are not now to make provisions for these things. You know that passage of scripture right there, there wouldn't any preacher in America today say he's following that passage of scripture and yet that's what Christ sent the twelve apostles out to do during his earthly ministry. Now don't give me this stuff about, well, I believe all the Bible's mine, I ought to do everything, I ought to do everything God says, and every, just because Jesus said it, I think I ought to do it. Jesus Christ told the twelve apostles not to take up a collection when they went, and every preacher you've ever been, been to hear takes up a collection, don't they? They all take up collections, and they take up collections because they need, they need the funds to take care of the ministry. Every preacher I know has got two coats. They all got script for the journey. They all got, they, they all got provisions. They provide, he says, provide neither gold nor silver. That's why Peter in Acts chapter 3, that, that lame man looked at it, him and John. He says, silver and gold have I none, but such as have give I unto thee. That isn't how people operate today. I don't care what they say about what they do. The fact is, nobody follows the Matthew chapter number 10 commission today. The way you know it is that I'm preaching to Gentiles today. And everybody you know preaches to Gentiles. Most of the preachers preachers you know today are Gentile preachers. That passage says you can't do it. That isn't all. The things it says to do, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils. People aren't doing that today. Oh, I know people claim to do it. But the same guy claiming to do it, he says, freely you receive, freely give, forgets that part of the verse. Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass. The people that claim to be healing the sick, raising the dead, cleansing the lepers are taking up the offerings, getting the gold, receiving the silver, and don't provide anything free. I mean, they sell the stuff, folks. Now, you know what I'm talking about. I'm not trying to be unkind, nasty, sarcastic, mean, bitter, or anything else. I'm just saying, hey, folks, it's time you just looked at what's going on around you. And I know some folks, you know, they say, well, let's don't talk about that, you know. If it's got the name of God on it, it must be right. No, 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 no. You need to understand something. There's the God of this world. That's the reason you, you got a book is so you can distinguish between what the God of this world does in religion and what God Almighty does in His Word. And the difference between what the Bible says and what you see going on out there ought to be able to tell you what's going on. Now, that commission back there isn't what we follow. Now, we've talked and talked and talked about that. People say, yeah, but how about the commissions Christ gave during his, that 40 days? He gave a commission in Matthew chapter 28. He gave a commission in Mark chapter 16. He gave one in Luke chapter 24. He gave one in John chapter 20, and he gave one in Acts chapter number 1. Now that's five of them, one, two, three, four, five, that he gave during that 40-day period. So people say, well, surely among that, 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 those, those five during that 40-day period, surely that's the last marching orders that the Lord gave before he went back to heaven. Surely we can find something in there we can keep. And the common understanding is, among most believers, is that when our Lord left this planet, He left some marching orders that you and I are to follow today. And I, I want you to understand something. He sure left some marching orders. He left five distinct sets of commissions, each one having a specific doctrinal focus and impact. And those five commissions are extremely important. But I want you to understand something. The Lord Jesus Christ in His earthly ministry and Matthew to John ministered to the nation Israel and He ministered to them the gospel of the kingdom. Now get that. He ministered the gospel of the kingdom over and He said, preach to them as you go. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This kingdom out here, they're preaching about it. They're talking about the good news that that thing's coming and they're calling them to repent and be baptized. The baptism of repentance for the mission of sins to cleanse them and prepare them to go through that kingdom, into that, through that tribulation, into that kingdom. The water baptism that John preached, the water baptism that Peter preached, the water baptism that the twelve priests had to do with preparing a priesthood, cleansing a priesthood to function as a kingdom of priests and a kingdom over here. Now, 
that gospel of the kingdom that they're preaching back here is, is, is the message that he gives them to preach in here. And I want you to understand something. The ministry back here was restricted to the nation Israel. In the book of Acts, the ministry is expanded and it's no longer to Israel only. Now it's to Israel first and to the rest of the nations of the earth through Israel. The ministry expands, but it does not change. Now that's an important distinction to make. It expands. It gets to be bigger. God promised Abraham back here in the Abrahamic covenant that through thy seed, and there they are, the nation Israel, all the kindred of the earth would be blessed. He promised to give him a land and a throne to reign over that land and a nation to fill that land and a government and that through the salvation God would give Abraham, God's blessings would go to all the ends of the earth. Now folks, that's what's going on back here. And that program begins here by calling that little flock that, that Jesus says, Fear not, little flock, it's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He calls them together here and He anoints them with the Holy Spirit here and He sends them out in the book of Acts in order to bring about that ministry that He trained them for back here. And I want you to see that. Matthew chapter 28, verse number 18. Now look at what goes on here. Don't just take the word of somebody. I, you know, I understand what people do. Go you, Matthew 28, verse 18. Jesus came and spake unto them, unto the disciples, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, and teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I'm with you all the way, even unto the end of the world. And the missionaries say, well, you need to go ye. And we talk about go. The first two letters in the, in the gospel are go. And we want to go and all that kind of thing. And you hear the, the go ye in the all nations in the missionary conferences. But you know, that, that isn't what, you got to read the passage. Don't let somebody just come along and take, pull something out of the verse and make out like that's what the verse says. He says, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. That passage right there, that commission demands that the person that follows it teach all things that, that, that Christ commanded them. In Matthew chapter 5, Jesus says that in the kingdom, the man that teaches the law to the, to the people in the kingdom is going to be great, and anybody who doesn't teach the law is going to be the least in the kingdom. If you're going to follow the Matthew 28 commission, brother, you've got to teach people to keep the law. You know what Paul says? You come right in here with the fall of Israel, the dispensation of grace, and here where we are today. You know what Paul says in here? He says we're not under the law, we're under grace. Let me tell you something. That's a real kick in the seat of the pants. <laughs> you know, there's a problem in Matthew 28 that, that the preachers don't look at. It's the legal, it's the requirement of teaching the law when we're not under the law, but we're under grace. But that isn't the half of it. Mark chapter number 16. Now, Mark chapter 16, everybody likes verse 15. He said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You stay tuned. <laughs> well, we're, going to, we're going to study that one in some detail. You see what gospel that is, it'll knock your socks off. It's the gospel of the kingdom, not the gospel of grace. That's why he says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. There isn't any way around it, brother. If you're going to follow Mark 16, you have to, say, you have to preach to people, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And then these signs shall follow them that believe. You've got to preach baptismal salvation. And you've got to preach miraculous signs and wonders following salvation everywhere you go to confirm the word. In Luke chapter 24, he says, that repentance and remission of sins might be preached in my name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Acts chapter 1, he says, you'll receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. You know what Jerusalem is? It's in Palestine. It's not in Michigan, Illinois, Alabama, California. It's not in the United States. It's in Palestine. It's in Palestine in every map you ever saw. Don't let somebody come along and say, well, Jerusalem's your hometown and Judea is the county. I mean, folks, taking that kind of liberties with the Word of God is blasphemous. And you say, well, who are you? To, I'm, all I am just reading what the verses say. It says Jerusalem. 
You know what Jerusalem is? That's Israel first, brother. Judea. That's where Jerusalem, that's, that's the country Judea's, uh, Jerusalem is located in. Samaria, that's the land mass of the ten northern tribes of, uh, 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 of Israel. And then what you've got over the land mass of all the tribes of Israel, Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 10, verse 22 and 23, to the disciples, you won't be gone over all the cities of Jerusalem until the Son of Man be come. They'll get over Israel. Israel will be converted. They'll have their kingdom. And then he'll give them the heathen for the uttermost parts of the earth for an inheritance, just like Psalm chapter 2 says which is what he's quoting in Acts chapter 1. So you've got all these commissions, and all these commissions fit that kingdom. Now the problem that people have is that they don't recognize that the Lord Jesus Christ didn't say the last, the last person to see him weren't these people here. Jesus Christ spoke again. After he ascended up into heaven, the Lord Jesus Christ spoke again to a guy, that we, uh, a man by the name of Saul of Tarsus. He made him Paul the Apostle. And if you come over to Romans, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 in one hand and Romans chapter 11, get the two passages. Take, take, take a dare and get the, book, get the verses. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Paul says in verse number 16, Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him so no more. Therefore if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath committed to us the ministry of reconciliation, how that to wit that God was in Christ, in, in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing our trespasses unto them, them, their trespasses unto them, and, and, uh, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Romans chapter 11 verse 15 says that, that, that the casting away of Israel, the fall of Israel, is the reconciling of the world. When God Almighty set the nation Israel aside in, in Acts chapter number 7, He was free then to reconcile the world unto Himself. That doesn't mean save the world, it means put the world in a position where dispensationally they're disadvantaged back here, their, their isolated condition is eliminated and now they are in a position where the Word of God can go out through them. He saved the Apostle Paul, sent Paul forth with a message called the mystery. And Paul says that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all longsuffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on Him to life everlasting. That's why it says, Now then we're ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Paul says his intent, his ministry, his commission was to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, this, this secret purpose that God has made known to him in here. Our commission, what God's doing today, is not establishing a kingdom, but it's building the church, the body of Christ, through faith in the finished work of Christ. We'll talk more about that next time. Until then, Maranatha. Thank you, Brother Jordan, for the message from the Word of God. Friends, we have a cassette tape that we'd like you to have to go along with today's study. The tape is entitled, Our Great Commission. It's yours free of charge. It's our way of saying thanks for listening. We'll be happy to see that you receive your free copy along with the free subscription to our monthly Bible study, The Grace Journal, if you simply write us here at the Message of Grace. The address should be on your screen. That's the Message of Grace, Box 97, Bloomingdale, Illinois, 60108. If you prefer, you can also call us during normal business hours at area code 708-529-0520. Request tape offer number 159. That's ta tape offer number 159. The Message of Grace is a ministry of Grace School of the Bible, and we're glad you've been with us here today. If our study together has been a help to you, we would be happy to put you in touch with the Bible study in this area where the message of God's wonderful grace is proclaimed from His rightly divided Word. And friend, if you are still not sure of salvation, that your sins are forgiven, and that you have eternal life as a present possession, let us know, and we'll be happy to send you some gospel literature that will show you the way. That address again is the Message of Grace, Box 97, Bloomingdale, Illinois, 60108. Thanks for being with us today, and God's best until we meet next time for another Message of Grace. <laughs>